one of the questions I often hear from coaches and healers is this how to attract high paying clients. And in your book, you talk about that counterintuitive fill in the blank strategy for attracting high paying clients. So can you share what that is? So this is that pillar that talks about the unique value proposition. Now, unique value proposition, or as some people call it UVP, that's not a new thing. I mean, that's been in existence forever. What a lot of people mistake is they make the UVP all about themselves. Now, you do need to express your unique qualities, what makes you stand out over others. But the thing to emphasize about the, the uniqueness that you bring to the table is what's in it for them. And there's two phrases that I love. If I express something unique about me, like one of the things that a lot of my audience loves is they love how I bring spirit into business. It's not just business, 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 but I bring this magic and this spirit into business. And so when I talk about that, I could just leave it at that. And it's all about me. But when I say the phrase, when I talk about, I love bringing spirit into business, so you can, and when I interject that phrase, so you can, or a variation on it could be, and as a result, you will. Now, my uniqueness, how is it going to serve you? And that is what most people are listening for in conversations. What's in it for me? And I find that adding that so you can phrase immediately lets people know why this is important, how this resonates with me, and feel confident to take that step to work with you and invest with you. Oh, wow. I love that. And yes, we are always listening. What is it? for me and I know one of the things that is for our audience is that you also talk about is the resource you share with coaches and that is the coaching business roadmap to success mm. so can you reveal a little bit how having this roadmap help prevent coaches from working those hours and hours, countless hours, maybe 60 hours or even more and spin their wheels without getting results. Yeah, what I find is people take, I call it the blind entrepreneurial leap. Most of us, uh, well, you said it earlier, you did something else before this. I did something else before this. Most coaches are not entrepreneurs first. They had a job, they were doing something and then something happened in their lives and they're like, wow, that's amazing. I want to help others with this too. And then they become a coach. And in that moment, their enthusiasm that I was talking about earlier has them take that blind entrepreneurial leap that says, I'm going to be a coach. I'm going to have my own business. And what happens is as soon as you do that, you, if you're not careful, your enthusiasm is going to lead the way. And all of a sudden you're going to be like, what do I need to do? I need to have a business. I want to get clients. Oh, I need this. Oh, I need, and you're going to start hearing from all kinds of people and you got to do that. Oh, I got to do this. Oh, no, I need that. Wait, I've got to have that. Oh, I need that too. And now you're in reactionary mode. It's like the tail is wagging the dog. Mm -hmm. and you have to be really careful with your enthusiasm. We got to channel that enthusiasm. But when you have a roadmap that gives you the phases, every phase that every uh, service-based business is going to go through. I don't care if you're a coach, a healer, a practitioner, a consultant, a speaker, a trainer, a doula. We had a snake charmer once. It like whatever your skill set is, when you build a business around you providing a service to a client, you're going to go through five phases. Now you may not get all the way to the fifth phase, depending on how big you want to grow your business. Some people, when I first started, I just wanted to replace my salary from the job I had gotten fired from. So back in the day, I was like, if I can make $50,000 from coaching income, like whoop, that was going to be a massive win for me. And so that was what was successful. Another gal that I know, she's retired, but she didn't want to stop coaching and she travels. She's like, I just want my coaching income to pay for my husband and mine's travel. Great. Other people, I want six figures. I wanted seven figures when I realized how awesome this was, but you're going to go through all the phases or at least the first four. And when you have a roadmap, inevitably, as soon as I put this roadmap and there's a copy of it in the book, as soon as I put this roadmap in front of people, they're like, oh my gosh, that's where I am. 
And when they can locate themselves, a lot of the doubt begins just uh, melts away. You're you're able to focus on the right things and the right sequence because you're like, oh, I'm here. And then I need to go there. But if you're in reactionary mode all the time with no no guide or no reference, you're skipping around all over the place. And so you do something and then you're like, oh shoot, I, I gotta do that. And oh, now I realize that's wrong. And and there's all these gaps and holes in your business, which is why you have to work 60 hours a week because you're all over the place. Mm-hmm. But when you've got the roadmap, you know what to work on, when to work on it, the right sequence. So it builds on each other. Yeah. And now you're filling the gaps, you're filling the holes and and filling in what's been missing. And that's why the confidence begins to ratchet up because you're like, oh, I do have my act together. I do know what I'm doing, even though it's still brand new and I'm not there yet. I've got a plan. I have a path. And Mm -hmm. so just knowing that it's like, okay, I can get, I can do this. And it gives them that energy they need to keep going. Mm 